best fun you can have with less than 150 horsepower. Let's take a look at some of the best fun cars with less than 150 horsepower. By the way, if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll link it down in the comment section. Before continuing with the video, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and a sub would be thrilling. Mazda MX-5 Of course I have to start here. The MX-5, also known as the Miata, is a popular rear-wheel drive roadster from Mazda. Completely overhauled for the 2016 model year, this purebred sports car is now powered by an all-new Skyactiv G 2-liter 4-cylinder motor and mated to a 6-speed Skyactiv drive automatic transmission with paddle shifters. There is a 6-speed manual variant available in some regions. Featuring the usual soft top passed down from its predecessors, there is also a retractable hard top variant known as the MX-5 RF, where RF expands to retractable fastback, available from 2017 model year. Besides a few kilograms of weight, there are no significant difference between the soft and hard top variants, even in terms of performance. Interior features include CD MP3 stereo with 6 disc changer, Bose 9 speaker system, power windows and mirrors, automatic AC, power steering, leather seats, smart key for keyless entry and ignition, auto dimming rear view mirror, navigation and cruise control. Additional features include chrome outer door handles, LED headlights, fog lamps, dual exhaust tips and 17 inch alloy wheels with run flat tires. Safety features include dual front and side airbags, ABS brakes, traction control, blind spot monitoring, stability control, TPMS, burglar alarm with immobilizer and rollover hoops behind the seats. And yes, you can get the factory fresh MX-5s with more than 180 horsepower. You can also head around to BBR and return with 220 horsepower or place a call to Flying Miata and have them squeeze in an LS engine with faintly staggering amount of horsepower. And these are all excellent life choices. But the fact of the matter is that a new entry level MX-5 with a 132 horsepower from its 1.5 litre naturally aspirated 4 cylinder is a uniquely brilliant prospect. It's the cheapest of the range, democratizing the notion of driving for pleasure. It's also exceptionally light, lighter than the car it replaced in fact, and has a small efficient engine. So your good time isn't tempered by high fuel bills or the nagging bit in the back of your mind that reminds you about how ungood fossil fuels are for the world in which we live. And all of this is absolutely deliberate on Mazda's part. The MX-5 is a car designed purely for maximum enjoyment by ensuring maximum involvement. You have to work with the car to get the most from it. Something lacking in far too many modern sports cars and it rewards your involvement at every turn. Really, I could have just left it here, but for the sake of this video being a list, let's continue. Suzuki Jimny This is another favorite car of mine. The Suzuki Jimny got a complete overhaul, debuting in late 2018 with much fanfare. However, the hype was muted a bit once it became clear that it is still following the old formula, with outdated 1.5 litre engine mated to either a 5-speed manual or 4-speed automatic gearbox. It only comes in a 3-door wide body form in most regions to date. There are rumours of a 5-door version launching in India, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. A ladder frame chassis, 3-link rigid axle suspension and part-time 4-wheel drive with low-range gearing are all standard. Also standard is a hard plastic interior, with the features such as fabric upholstery, power windows, manual AC and a stereo system. It now has 377 litres of luggage space with the rear seats folded down. When all the four seats are occupied, the capacity gets reduced to 85 litres. For easy dirt removal, the backs of the rear seats and the boot floor are now coated with plastic. Dual front airbags and ESP are also standard. It's not so much that the 100 horsepower and 95 pound feet aren't up to the task of shoving the Jimny along at high speeds, even with its freight container inspired aerodynamics. It's that gearing is set up for off-road crawling, so you are already sitting at 4000 RPM by the time you reach the speed limit. You'll probably send a valve out before you hit the Jimny's top speed too. Also, slab sides mean that crosswinds are not a friend to the Jimny driver. But the plus side is, with a few modifications, it could actually look like a mini G-Wagon. Just look how good it looks. With that said, the low gearing and the super old school way the 5 speed manual shifts means that anyone who grew up driving a 90s car will feel instantly at home. 
and you're going to have to run up and down those gears a bunch. So you'll come to appreciate just how positively you can bang it into gear with a crunch or a groan. That's where the real fun comes in. The Jimny is so raw and agricultural by design that you are as involved driving it as you are an MX-5. Better yet, you drive the Jimny pretty much the exact same way regardless of the terrain. Food welded to the floor, bouncing up and down, leaning over and giggling like a loon in equal measure. Austin or Morris Mini Yep, here we are, at the crossroads of obviousness and inevitability. How could the virtues of low-powered fun cars ever be celebrated without considering a car that is not only the most popular for low horsepower hilarity, but famous to almost everyone, for almost everything? But I am still going to pose a counter question. How do we not have one of the least powerful and most exciting vehicles to ever exist? And if you set up the misty-eyed Carnaby Street, Twiggy, Italian Job, Paddy Hopkick Nostalgia ride, one of the most distinctive and fun cars ever made is the original Austin Mini. And with only a few handfuls of horsepower, the original Austin Mini seemed to be one of the most distinctive and fun cars ever made. For example, the top spec Cooper S had a brilliant 76 horsepower from its 1.3 litre A series engine. And still, when coupled with the featherweight body of the Mini and wheel at each corner style, the Mini could outrun cars three times its size and six times as powerful on the track. Just watch a few clips of the Minis dicing back in the day of big American muscle cars, losing them on the streets, but carving back the time in pristy sections. The Original Fiat 500 And maybe here's the perfect evidence that fun doesn't need to include speed. Yes, the 500 follows the same simple precepts as the cars that have come before it on this list. Low weight, tiny dimensions and so on. But even with those boons, the 13 horsepower standard fit 479cc, yes, 479cc engine will not provide anything similar to white knuckle performance even though the whole car weighs less than half a ton. There were of course 18, 22 and even 38 horsepower models in the Abarth 695 which is pretty healthy given it operates with a 2-cylinder 700cc engine but it is not needed to have fun in the tiny fear. The 500 brims with character, apart from being one of the finest piece of industrial design ever conceived. But in all ways, it was built to be as cost effective as humanly possible. Material wise, running wise, maintenance bills wise, interior packaging and of course purchasing price. But this does not rub the miserly attitude in your face like a Mitsubishi Mirage would. So it doesn't matter when there is an eardrum pounding din when it approaches the peak speed of around 60 mph or around 100 km per hour or the radiator continues to leak hot air into the cabin even as you want to block it out. The 500 ranks as one of the purest, most straightforward relations ever conceived between man and machine. Unless it's an E30. Sorry, BMW fanboy here. Back to the 500. It's not a fire-breathing track car that you can pay tens of thousands of dollars for. The 500 is lush and polite and gives the feeling that both of you are working together to conquer the hill. And in order to climb the hill, you simply have to work together extremely hard. Yet, all the same, you will enjoy doing it. Porsche 356 Speedster Well, I didn't say that we were going to talk about cheap cars, but about cars with low power. And the 356 Speedster takes both the decidedly not cheap and definitely not powerful boxes with millimetric precision. Well, it started as the cheapest in the Porsche 356 line, robbed of all luxuries but kept everything needed to roll out of the garage on Saturday morning and demolish a whole host of sports cars that evening. And yes, that was at a time when a Porsche with fewer things cost lesser than a Porsche with more things. Simpler days, right? Like you would imagine, the 356 Speedster was an air-cooled four-banger that made somewhere around 70 to 110 horsepower. Yep, that is it. But let's not be coy. 110 horsepower meant more than 125 mph or around 200 km per hour with extremely aerodynamic featherweight speedster body in the 50s. In fact, the only way to get a 356 speedster with more than 150 horsepower is to buy a replica. The 356 speedster is undoubtedly one of the most replicated cars in the world, to say the least. There's plenty for you. There are various replicas, from the basic and comparatively unright knockouts to bang on bolt for bolt reproductions to what we claim may be the ultimate 356 speedster. And how could they exist without the efficient, proportionate and intentional original 356 speedster? 
but there is another ride that you could have which is cheap to run, extremely compact and can ensure extreme amounts of fun. That's a bike. Fun fact, a cheap as day old chips motorbike with 48 horsepower will do a 0 to 60 in 6 seconds. Ok sure, it will also top out at 110 mph or around 180 km per hour because human bodies are pretty far from aerodynamic. But think about the amount of power you need in a modern car to get that kind of 0 to 60 times. That's quicker than a brand new Golf GTI and nearly as quick as 315 horsepower Civic Type R. Just a mere handful of horsepower depending on your height and comfort zone is enough to inspire such a noisy sustained array of giggles that pedestrians will probably wonder. A. Whether you really own the bike or have borrowed it from someone else and B. How many laws you broke to look so cheerful. The great news is that no road motorcycle would require over 150 horsepower and in most cases no more than 100 are required. It is the main power to weight ratio where the small mass of a motorcycle ensures that what seems like poor power is enough to push you twice as hard as you expected. If you've seen the Grand Tour, you could see how much fun Richard Hammond had in a bike he bought for 800 quid in Africa. If you stuck around till the end, thanks a lot. It means a lot to me. Everything I've talked about in this video and the videos before are only my opinion. If you've enjoyed this video, I'll be doing a whole lot more videos like this in the future. So leave a thumbs up and a sub would be amazing. Also leave your thoughts down in the comment section. My name is Jitin and I'll catch you in the next one.